And we're live. And we are live. And um, it looks like Katie says uh, she is joining us backstage. We're going to make sure she has the right link. Um, but... Welcome to the back catalog <laughs> listening party where anything can happen on anything a snowy Friday afternoon. Um, this is your uh, your your weekly musical happy hour. And uh, we're coming live from Minneapolis, Minnesota, where we've got some snow. And so we have a little some some delays in uh, in our show today. But uh, we're so excited to see all you folks there. I see Alinda um, already uh, on board here. And Connie, hey, Snowy Richfield, Snowy here. We have Alex in Cedar Lake. Um, we have Alan, another heat wave in Dallas, another GMT, another <laughs> BCLP. I like it. It's got a nice ring to it. Hey, Alan, great to see you. Joe's ready in South Minneapolis with his Guinness for the occasion. And uh, we uh, we sure appreciate all of you uh, being here, Alex, enjoying a little bourbon to warm me up and get ready to shovel the white stuff. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, uh, Steve, our friend Steve Schly with the with the snowman, and yeah, it is um it is a little snowy here, and thus our our guest is not yet here, our our guest Katie. But I I wanted to uh, let folks know that uh, we we have a um a snowy day here. I I took some footage earlier out my studio window to share with you all um this is just a little bit of a uh, of the um the white stuff flying and uh it's caused some delays but um we're uh we're cozy cozying in and getting ready for a, a nice tasty beverage and some great music this hour that's right and uh we're so happy to be with you again i don't know that we did the proper introductions but my name is mother banjo one of your hosts and <laughs> i'm anthony Erig, the other host and again uh we're going to be being joined by uh, Katie McMahon, a wonderful Celtic singer here on the show. And we're going to be digging into her 2010 uh, holiday album, Christmas Angels, which we're really excited about. And looks like uh, so the snowy weather does seem to be appropriate for today's uh, holiday themed show. And if you're new to the show, this is where we dig into old records and talk about them with artists. And uh, I think uh, joining us, I think Katie is here. All right. Us. Let's uh, let's bring her into the conversation, ladies and gentlemen. It's Katie. McCann. Hi, Katie. Yay! Hi. And oh, hopefully I love the you. Fake audience. I mean, the real audience. Oh, yeah. oh it's the real audience oh, yeah. for sure. They're In fact, out there. We were, we were just uh, kind of doing exchanging our greetings uh, with folks who are joining us from Texas, Connecticut, uh, Richfield. Um, South Minneapolis, all over the place, who are joining us today. So, um, North uh, and and some of them are even have a Guinness ready for the occasion, Katie. So we're excited about that. Well, and, I'm sorry, I'm I'm on wine. <laughs> <laughs> no, that it's is a perfect day. Allowed. It's a per good day for a red wine. In fact, I was good actually looking. That. I was looking through my cabinet because I, because of the snowy roads, I did not have a chance to get something fresh from the liquor store. So I was like, well, what do I have for this, you know, Celtic Christmas show? And uh, I sadly had no Irish whiskey in the house. I have some scotch and some bourbon, but no terrible. Irish whiskey. I know it's a really <laughs> bad situation. And, um, but I know that there are some, we're going to talk about this record Christmas angels, but there's some German elements as well in this, uh, album i believe um and so i thought maybe a german beer would be appropriate <laughs> i have this advent um, oh yeah absolutely. we have this we have this uh we got from this uh silent auction that my husband and i went to at the landmark center in saint paul we we won this like beer advent calendar so it comes with like a beer for like every day of december <laughs> you <know>? nice <laughs> it's oh, all that's... german beers awesome. so i don't know how to pronounce this it's Hussar and Trunk? I don't know. I can't really tell. There's a wow. German soldier on it. I love it. So. Hussaren. I have no idea. Ooh, I have no idea. <laughs> well, I can speak German. I know. So if, and, my, um, <laughs> I'd, like to say, I'd like to say hello to my German mom and my Irish dad who are listening all the way over in County Kerry in Ireland. Oh, awesome. So, and uh, we love having So the that's got to be your furthest away. Business. Well. <laughs> well, it might be today. We we've definitely had folks uh, tune in from one of our regulars is in Germany, and we have we've had people from uh, Japan and other places. Oh. But today, so far, they win the prize. So, mm -hmm. um, if you are further 
than Ireland. You let us know and throw your <laughs> throw where you are tuned in from in the comments, and we'll uh, we'll give you a little uh, shout out. <laughs> and yes, it's uh, shovel time number two. That's mm -hmm. true. Um, I've not shoveled at all, but we'll see what happens. I have a feeling that's not going to happen tonight. <laughs> no, I'm going to just wait for it all to, mm. to land uh, I know. tomorrow. I'm kind of of the opinion, sort of like raking leaves. I only want to have to do it once, you know, <laughs> not not 10 times. <laughs> um, but uh, snow aside, we're really excited about the music today. And we're excited to have Katie McMahon join us. And uh, Katie, uh, you are joining us from somewhere in the Twin Cities. I'm in St. Paul today. Yes. Excellent. A, a wonderful Irish so city. Usually, but at the moment, St. Paul. <laughs> Very much so. I have an Irish bar in the corner. It's perfect. That's awesome. <laughs> so you, you can walk there. Whatever the snowy weather might do, uh, you have access. That's great. Uh, well, we are really excited yeah. to, um, again, dig into this record. You have two Celtic Christmas albums that are fabulous. Um, and we let, uh, and you chose uh, the 2010 release, Christmas Angel. So we're going to be playing songs, talking about the songs, answering folks' questions online. But for people who might not be as familiar with your music as I am, because I've had the privilege of almost every year for the last, I don't know, at least 10 years, had you uh, join me on my radio show every every December to talk about your Celtic Christmas shows. Uh, so we've known each other a long time. Uh, but for folks who maybe aren't as familiar with your music, maybe you can give your brief, like, two-minute bio of, like, uh, you know, how you came to make music and maybe what led up to this record in particular? Sure. Um, well, I did some classical training in voice and harp as a child and early adult. And um, then um, the choir I was in uh, got to be part of this strange little um, piece called River Dance that was 10 minutes long at the time and was a huge success, huge phenomenon, turned into a show. All that time, the group I was in, we were making traditional Irish music and doing our own thing on the side and uh, toured with Riverdance as the lead singer for five years. And uh, during that time, I made about, I think it was two CDs then, and I made another three here then in um, Minnesota when I decided to come off the road and settle here. So my music kind of actually traditional Irish but uh, with the Christmas stuff, it's very full of different carols from Ireland and Europe and Germany as well. Wonderful. And uh, yeah, we're going to hear all those influences on this uh, album. We're going to also talk a little bit about uh, maybe some of the live shows you've done here over the years because uh, they're, they've been pretty spectacular. Uh, but let's uh, dig into some music because that's what folks really tune in for. <laughs> and um, uh, the first track that you picked out to um, feature from this record, Christmas Angels, is Angelus ad virginum, if I did it, said it right. Uh, I'm guessing that's Latin. So I, it's a dead language. So I don't know if we know the pronunciation, right? Uh, yes, it's the angel, the angel and the, vir the virgin. So I, I pronounce it Angelus ad virginum, but I have no idea <laughs> how they pronounced it. So guess is as good as mine. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, is there anything you want to say about this track before we listen, or you just want to talk about it afterwards? Um, it's a cool track because it's even though it's in Latin, it's actually uh, an old Irish um, carol that was written in Latin. And uh, it's kind of an explanatory tale about how uh, Mary came to have Jesus and the angels visit and all of that for people who'd never heard the story before. So it's pretty graphic. <laughs> Every <laughs> Oh, we'll have to get a translation later. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right. Well, well, let's give it a listen. Uh, this is Katie McMahon on the Back Catalog Listening Party. Angelus a virginem sub in trans in conclave Virginis famidinem de mulcens in quidave Ava regina virginum celitere qua dominum Concipi es et pari as in data Salutem hominum Tu porta celi fata Mede la criminum Quamo don conciperem quel virum non cognovi, qualità confringerem quel firmamente vovi, spirito santi grazia, perficiente con mia, ne ti me asset gaudia secura, quod castimonia, ma ne vitinte pura, de ipotenzia. Patic virgo nobili, Respondens in qui dei, salvio lansum humilis omnipotentis dei, tibi celesti nuncio, tanti sacreti congio, consentiens et cupiens videre, factum quod audio, parata 
All right. Katie nice. McMahon here on the Back Catalog Listening Party with a, Latin, uh, a song written in Latin, but an old Irish uh, tune and that we are enjoying from her 2010 release, Christmas Angels. Today, we're revisiting the album, talking about the songs. And as you mentioned before, we heard the song, Katie, that's a song telling the story of uh, Mary being pregnant with Jesus. And, um, and you said it goes into graphic detail. I don't know if any of you out there... Uh, speak latin in fact my parents are listening i know they know latin i don't know if they yeah. can catch all the lyrics but i would love to know what the actual literal translation is for that um so if you happen to know well, throw them in the it comments was more like um yeah it, it was more like because back in the day we kind of take the story for granted and it is a kind of a kind of story so it had to be explained how this all came to pass to people so that they would go along with it and believe it I suppose <laughs> so it's not like naughty or anything yeah. it's just kind of like this is what happened guys yeah like, oh okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean that was probably one of the prime ways to to spread uh these messages you know through song and um I I, you know, I think we sometimes mm -hmm. forget about how important that was um mm -hmm. for uh for these for these messages religious or otherwise um, but I have to say that like, there's something about music I don't understand the lyrics <laughs> that I just love even more. It's like I can listen to it and imagine <laughs> anything's happening. You know, there. I mean, yeah. I'm, I won't explain what where my mind went, but it's um, <laughs> it's uh, you know, I've always really enjoyed that. It, I feel like there's another there's something else you can kind of lay over the top of of music like that. And I love, by the way, my sure. mom just said, we won't tell. So apparently they know and they're just not sharing um, what what the translation is. But I will say that one thing I uh, am curious about, Katie, is I'm wondering, like, how, how did you learn this tune? Is this a tune that you had heard growing up or is this something that you've discovered later in life? It actually is a tune I heard growing up. I When I was about four, I was a big fan of a group uh, of musicians and singers called the Consort of St. Sepulchre. And they were a group of students from Trinity College Dublin who uh, researched a bunch of really old Irish music in the college that had been there since, you know, Elizabethan times. And um, they then performed them and dressed up. And I just thought it was oh, the most amazing thing I'd ever seen as a four year old. I was like, what? <laughs> so, and, you know, I got to, I got to meet the girl who sang that on their album and you know became friends with her husband who was also on it and uh you know which was really cool but um so i always wanted to sing it so yeah i love i'm picturing young katie um growing up being such a fangirl you know some people have like like when i was growing up um like my friends would have like posters of boy bands you know on their <laughs> bedroom walls i like to think that you katie had like all these like like choral stuff and like you know old old music you well, know kind kind of <laughs> that early age yes for sure i was a huge fan of that but i i did you know to my dad's chagrin get really into david bowie when i was 13 and uh, he was on my wall then so yeah he didn't approve of that so actually that's one gig that's one gig i am doing at the moment we do a kind of bowie tribute show on uh january 8th which is his birthday at the Hook and Ladder. Nice. Ah. So that's coming up pretty soon. So that's a completely different kind of style, obviously. And there's a bunch of us, and we all get to do a couple of songs, and it's acoustic, so it's actually really mellow and nice. So I think nice. we do it almost every year. Not last year, but... Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So uh, you Twin Cities folks, uh, if you want to check that out, you should go to thehookmpls.com for more info about the David Bowie tribute. You can catch Katie McMahon, uh, you know, showing off her, her vocals in a totally different way. And uh, it's very cool. And uh, but today we are digging into her Celtic Christmas album, one of two that she has. And I would love to know, Katie, um, you know, there's obviously so much wonderful um, Christmas music in general, but especially in the Celtic music tradition. Um, uh, mm -hmm. is, is Christmas in particular a special time for you? Or is it just that there's so much great music that you're like, well, I have to put out another album because there's so much of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's my favorite holiday. I just think it's magic. And, you know, you've got Christian aspect and then you've got the sort of pagan thing that's underpinning it all this the kind of being with nature and that this is the darkest days of the year and we're hoping for the light to come back and all of that symbolism and the candles and all that so i absolutely love it and 
I always loved it as a kid. So it's ironic that I've really, and great, that I've managed to keep making Christmas music and discovering Christmas music throughout the years. I, I really like it. Nice. Um, and it looks like uh, Joe says, Celtic Christmas has never been back catalog in our house. We've had the CD since it's for, uh, since first release, since always stayed on top of the stack for Christmas music, number one. So uh, right. Yay, that's Joe. right. Yeah, <laughs> Joe's, Joe knows where it's at. And, uh, and we're going to dig into oh. more of this because this album is really interesting. And we're going to hear this as we play through the different songs is that, as you mentioned, it comes from a lot of different traditions and a lot of different players on the album. Um, is there anything you want to say before we move on to the next track about the last track we heard in terms of the personnel or who played on that track? Um, yeah, we had, we actually recorded that album right after we did a, a tour and we did our big generally do every year at the O'Shaughnessy. We've been doing it for 20 years and sometimes it involves like 40 people in the show and guest stars and all that kind of thing. But, um, so we got off and, and recorded it straight after. Um, so we've got Karen Mueller in there, who she's like my mm. my band leader, does all the harp and dulcimer and guitar. Yeah, she's amazing. And um, Zach Klein. Oh, yeah, Zach's great. He's a two. Um, Mark Anderson. I think we have some pictures here of uh, of the of the band. I, don't know, I think Katie froze up on us, but we can see here there's Zach and I recognize uh, Karen. And some Irish dancers, young yeah. Irish dancers as well. So. And for those of you not in the Twin Cities, this really is kind of an institution at this point, especially uh, Saint, for folks in St. Paul. I can speak um, to here's. Looks like we lost Katie here, but why don't we enjoy these nice pictures? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi, Katie. We were just enjoying these pictures that you sent along of uh, of the program. I can't quite hear you guys, though. Let me wonder what that is. Let me check my mic and stuff. Hold on. All right. And there's a nice, nice shot of Katie. <laughs> it's working. Yeah. yeah. Playing the harp. Well, I, I tell you what, Ellen, how about we give another track a listen here while uh, Katie gets herself situated? That sounds and, great. Uh, and I'm, I might throw it into your court to try to pronounce this, this next title. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's German. I don't really have a lot of German in my arsenal, but I it's fairly phonetic, right? So uh, yeah. von, von Himmelhock. That's what I'm going to go with. All right, Severin, if you're out there, you can uh, you can tell Correct. us if it was right or wrong. Severin's one of our good friends from Germany. Um, let's give it a listen. Um, von Himmelhock <laughs> uh, from Katie McMahon off of her Christmas Angels release here on the Back Catalog Listening Party. Vom Himmel hoch, ihr Englein kommt. Susani, 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 kommt, singt und klingt, kommt, pfeift und trummt, Halleluja, Halleluja, von Jesus singt und Maria. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 
Susan, Susan, davon das Kind lang schlafen muss. Halleluja, Halleluja, von Jesus singt und Maria. Sind Frieden Menschen weit und breit. Katie McMahon here on the Back Catalog Listening Party uh, with the tune, the German tune, which Katie, now that you're back with us, maybe can <laughs> do you can the correct. Straight. You can do the correct pronunciation of it. Oh, from Himmel hoch, from the sky above, from heaven above. Okay, um, I was. You were close. I was close, you but were not. Close. <laughs> uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful tune. Yeah, oh, yeah. Tell so us a little cute. bit about that tune. Yeah, so that's one that my German mother taught me as a very young child. So have a lot of nostalgia about it and it means a lot to me. And again, when I was doing some of these carols here, I was surprised and I love that people would come up and say, yeah, my German grace to sing that to me. And <clears throat> there was a lot more sort of German kind of culture here than, than I thought, you know, I knew about Irish Paul but I didn't know about the German culture as well. So that was great. And um, I love that carol too, because it's like the the angels come along to see Jesus and they bring a different instrument in each verse. We kind of build it up, you know, first time the harp and then the fiddle comes in and it's mentioned that the band comes in and the singers, so we bring them all in. So <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of a cute song. Yeah, and I love I love songs that do that, that that like kind of outline all the instruments that are coming in and, and, <laughs> and are celebrating the band, which I think is kind of cool. <laughs> well, I was going to ask about yeah. that, about the arrangement and stuff and how much you're involved with, with kind of putting that final product together in terms of, all right, you know, Zach, now start doing that fiddle yeah. line. And uh, can you talk a little bit about the arrangements of me, these songs? I, yeah. I, I do all the um, arrangements, I, I produce it, and um, we had, um, we we're lucky for a while as well to have um, one of the singers who's a composer himself, David Moore, and he used to do the singer harmonies, which uh, were a little beyond me, although I've started doing it now and I'm doing okay. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, so, I, but I, I would have all the ideas and, and arrange the, the songs, and then of course the band would also have great ideas that we'd incorporate in really fun thing to do uh, and it yeah. sounds it sounds really good too where where was this project recorded um this was recorded in in wild sound in north Minneapolis with uh, matthew zimmerman <laughs> don't know if you know him yes yeah. we yeah. sure do uh, i think we're gonna have to start a tradition <laughs> on the show where we take a shot every time someone mentions wild sound studio because <laughs> it gets mentioned <laughs> all the, a lot yeah. all the best uh all the best uh music here in the twin cities seems to be coming out of wild sound oh yeah He's, sure. he's wonderful. I love working with him. I did um, the last two albums with him, and uh, hopefully, we have another couple of ideas, and hopefully, we can get going with those soon. Could be really fun to work with him again. Well, I'd love to know more about yeah, what else do you have going on? Because I, I it's been a few years since your last uh, record came out, and uh, I know you're a busy mom and busy with lots of other projects, but. Um, you know, uh, what what might you be cooking up or thinking about for your next project? I know you have, again, a couple Celtic Christmas albums. You have a St. Patrick's Day one. Uh, what's next for Katie McMahon? So we have a, a huge backlog of new critic that we definitely should get out there. And because everyone at the show says, where can I buy this? And we're like, mm, <laughs> we got 20 grand. Yeah, I'll make it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I that's sense a Kickstarter wanted, in know. your future. Yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. That's what we have to do nowadays. But um, yeah. So there's that, but I also have a project that I've had like on the back burner for a long time, um, which will be my feisty females. <laughs> um, nice. CD. And I, awesome. I don't know if I've told you about this album, but um, I discovered all these great uh, sort of 18th, 19th century songs about uh, these kind of women who would dress up as men to. Um, 
kind of trick all the other men. Like they pretend to be pirates or highwaymen and just kind of dupe old guys. <laughs> and <laughs> I, and I, I discovered all these songs. I'm like, oh, they're really fun, you know, and kind of rabble rousing and all the rest. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to make that CD. And I also have kind of got about half of a lullaby C uh, recorded mm, as well. Nice. So that's another one on the back wow. burner. Hmm. I would love it if some of the lullabies had some of the feisty women. Yes. I don't know if you can combine those two, <laughs> but I feel like that would be Go really interesting. Really feisty. feisty. And, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that, yeah, that's for the moms for sure. Um, well, if you just tuned in to Back Catalog Listening Party, we're being joined by Katie McMahon, who's joining us from across the river in St. Paul. Tony and I uh, are in Minneapolis, and all of you tuned in from all over the world. It's so great to have you join us for this uh, Celtic Christmas show and uh, we're revisiting Katie's record Christmas Angels which came out in 2010 and talking about what else she might be cooking up uh, in the new year uh, but we want to hear more music um, and so the next track you picked to feature on today's show is Angels Are Singing is there anything you want to say about this song? Oh yeah this is a super fun song um, written by a guy called Michael McGlynn who ran and uh, one of the choirs I sing with in Dublin before we joined Riverdance. And we did a lot of that kind of traditional and um, church music and stuff. But this was kind of a really fun, almost a joke carol that he wrote um, to sort of be kind of like a Bing Crosby type of vibe, a kind of American carol. <laughs> um, but it's it's super fun. And it's a, it's got all the good feels for Christmas and, you know, the, the snow and all that stuff. And super fun. All right, let's give it a listen. Uh, this is Angels Are Singing, Katie McMahon here on the Back Catalog Listening Party. Ding dong, ding, ding dong, ding, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding Children at the special time of year They're smiling and laughter The things that grown-up children hold so dear That grown-up children hold so dear You can feel the cold of winter in the air There's a sound of carol singers everywhere are singing, silver bells are ringing, Robin sings his merry little song. Time for goodwill, let's make it last the whole year long. Let's make it last the whole year long. You can feel the cold of winter in the air. There's the sound of carol singers everywhere. You need that last ooh. Uh, ooh. Exactly. Uh, that was uh, great. The magic of Christmas. That was Katie McMahon with Angels Are Singing from her 2010 release, uh, Christmas Angels, which we are revisiting today on Back Catalog Listening Party with Katie McMahon herself uh, talking about the songs. And uh, yeah, that was a really fun tune. And I can totally hear what you're talking about, sort yeah. of evoking <laughs> that kind of classic American style Christmas song. Yeah. 
It's a uh, real fun. And I have to ask. So uh, the cover of your album has, you know, and all the photography uh, that's a part of the CD um, has, you know, this beautiful wintry vibe. And it looks like looks like there's actually snow. But I know so many people make their records, their holiday records, you know, in like June or whatever. <laughs> and so I'd be curious, um, you know, did you do these photos that same year and, and just kind of rush the project through? Or how did you make that happen? Well, I was so well planned back in the day. Um, and I think my daughter was born like at the release year of this. Oh, no, my. Oh, wow. Was it my, yeah, she was born. But before I knew I was pregnant, we, so we made, we started recording it in January after we'd just done the live shows. So we were all fresh. And that's when I did the photo shoot as well. Oh, so it that's was smart. Actually, kind of around, <laughs> yeah, February, March time. Really a lot of snow, um, really wet snow. And um, photographer is uh, Steve Wolf. We went out to his house. And um, and the coat I made with a friend of mine called Moira Lang. And I had this idea from this this Russian fairy tale. I wanted, like, the fur and this nice material. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Gorgeous, so we made that. I coat. helped make that myself with, with my friend. She's much better than me at that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, but pattern. we did do, yeah, the first Celtic Christmas one, I did the... Um, photo session at the end of August and we actually did it on Mihaha Parkway and it was roasting hot. <laughs> we, had, <laughs> we went beside, behind a Christmas tree or in front of a Christmas tree, put a couple of decorations on it and I wore this really hot red cheerling coat <laughs> and I was absolutely roasting hot and cars were like beeping at me because it was nice. <laughs> it's funny. But it's, a, it's a nice photo too. <laughs> I feel like, uh, yeah, because I've heard this story from other artists of like having to do these photo shoots in the winter. That's why I was so impressed that you had like snow in your photos. I was like, did she go to like <laughs> Scandinavia to have these photos done? Um, but I I do, uh, you know, I feel like if I had seen you, uh, you know, in that heavy coat and somebody would be like, oh, Katie's making another C- Celtic Christmas record. I <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you'd be right. <laughs> well, that is so smart, though, to record these songs right after your holiday shows. I, I think a yeah. lot of us don't think of doing that, you know, but you're right. It's like after the holidays, what else do you have to do? Everything's always leading up to those big holiday shows. And as you said, you're fresh. And the, if you wait, I don't know if you have this experience when you do these holiday shows every year, Katie. I mean, you've been doing them for enough years. Maybe you don't encounter this, but I feel like every year I have to relearn the holiday music because I forget, you know, it's been you know, like 10 oh, months yeah. since I've sung it, you know, and, yeah. and um, I feel like I'm just getting good at them by the time the holidays are over. So <laughs> <laughs> I know it's tough. You've just given me a great idea though, Ellen, I have to say, and if it happens, it's down to you. Um, <laughs> I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking about um, the, the feisty female concept album and that I should do a show as part of the O'Shaughnessy women of substance. Yes. Oh, yeah. And then right after that, record it. Oh yeah, that is <laughs> that is smart. Only a feisty woman would think that way. So right? yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. I think that would be great. Um, I just thought I'd I, I'd show oh, everybody yeah. um, uh, the ninety degree um, yeah. <laughs> cover Look shot. How happy here. I am! I'm melting practically. Yep. <laughs> yeah. She's like, just take the picture. <laughs> yeah, the, that smile is like I, I'm yeah. almost yeah. done. This is the last yeah. one I have in me. <laughs> so hot. And the hat and everything. I forgot about the hat. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Well, you did a good job, though, at looking very Christmassy. So uh, kudos <laughs> to you and your photographer for staging the right kind of sh- uh, shot. Um, so uh, this album, again, recorded in Minneapolis, incorporating all these different traditions. Um, are there you said that there's a lot of Christmas songs that you, ha- you know, that you haven't gotten yet to record that you've done in the live shows. Um, are there any kind of other um, either traditions or, or styles of music that you've been wanting to incorporate into maybe your next Christmas album? Well, we've, I just, I'm amazed that I keep discovering, first of all, more Irish carols that I haven't heard before, which are wonderful. Um, but then from other traditions, there's lots of interesting English ones. We did a bunch of Scandinavian, Norwegian, Swedish ones. We haven't done Finnish yet. We did Ukrainian because we uh, had Pedro Strushko as our mm. uh, guest one year, which was wonderful. Um, yeah, Italian, French. We kind of wow. we keep dipping into all these cultures, and and it's super fun. Um, we did one song. I'm thinking that just kind of 
made me laugh so much. It was a, a, a really bawdy sort of Christmas, Irish Christmas carol in English. So it might have been English or Irish or a mix of both. And it was about a dance they did at Christmas, kind of like musical chairs, except on people's laps. <laughs> <laughs> So Get those feisty stop. women for that. <laughs> and it's like, it's just so hilarious. And then, you know, they're falling off and they're going into the ditch. And it's like, oh, my God, this is so fun. How have I never heard of this, Carol? This is like, this should be sung every year, you know? <laughs> yeah. And and it makes you want to know, like, be able to try and recreate the dance itself, like, or well, the, act, know, or, or the game know. or whatever. <laughs> no, it makes me curious. Like, are there instructions in the lyrics, you know, so that you can yeah. actually do it, you know? Um, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's well, great. Speaking of dancing, we, we earlier we were looking at some photos that from your show, and there was some some dancing involved in in the um, Celtic Christmas show that you do at the O'Shaughnessy. And I'm just wondering if you could talk a little bit about how dance and music kind of are married for you and for the the you know the, your concept of this whole Celtic Christmas. Sure. Um... Well, being in river dance, I, I'm not an Irish dancer myself. I was a ballet dancer as a child. But um, being in river dance, I came to really appreciate the art form and how wonderful it is and how uplifting it is as well. And um, also in the big culture of Irish dance here in America. And for many years then, we've hooked up with mostly the Coeur d'Amour Irish dancers um, who are based in Minneapolis. But we also have where other troops um, Rink and the Cree, um, they're based in St. Paul. And my daughter was just starting lessons, so that's kind of exciting. Nice. Um, but yeah, we have them sing, uh, and they, they normally will dance to um, instrumental music, but they um, often will we'll get them to do more complicated stuff to uh, singers. And, and that's kind of hard, challenging, but it, it really mixes very nicely together. Nice. Nice. And I also want to have a little shout out uh, to some folks uh, joining us, Anne from South Minneapolis, and then Karen Mueller. Hey, Karen. Who uh, you mentioned hey, uh, kind of is all over this album and a part of the Celtic Christmas shows as band leader and multi instrumentalist. And um, Karen, we have to have you on the show sometime. Yes, so a twin I'm just putting treasure. that out there now. Yeah. And, um, but uh, Karen, you should jump in if you have any funny stories or memories <laughs> of any of these shows or of this uh, album in particular, Christmas Angels. <laughs> we would love, we've, we, this has happened before when we've had artists on the show and sometimes a producer or a bandmate pops on and they and they <laughs> they do some cor correcting of some of the storytelling so um yeah i'd love i'd love to know we all remember it differently <laughs> exactly isn't that the tradition though of like uh, especially of these uh in like in these especially in these older like irish songs you know the the songs are basically just accounts of things that happen that get told in new and different ways as new people interpret them right Definitely. <laughs> well, I know I know Karen Definitely. and no, Karen, Zach. Karen, um, and I have been great. Oh. oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Karen and I have been friends for a long time as well as uh, playing music together. So, so that's to have her alongside. We've had a lot of adventures. Uh, we <laughs> often do a show up in Duluth, which uh, is really hairy to get back from <laughs> in the middle of December, and. Uh, yeah, so we've we've had a lot of good times together. Wonderful. Well, I was just going to say, I know Karen and Zach, the the fiddle player um, on this album from Bluegrass Circles, and so that just makes me. Uh, Ellen was just asking you about the different traditions you might be doing. Do you ever dabble in in that world at all? The bluegrass, old time, American old time. Um, not hugely, but we do do. Oh gosh, we do do an Appalachian carol as well. Like I can't remember what it's called. It also needs to be recorded. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So, and, I mean, definitely I let them bring those influences in, in, in their style. Like, I'm, I'm not like, you must only play in the Irish style. So <laughs> that's kind of fun to have musicians that, that ex sort of specialize in different um, types of music than you do. Like um, Mark Anderson, our percussionist, who does a lot of African drumming. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really cool. And he brings that kind of flavor to the Irish music and makes it richer, I think. And then there's one tune I can't remember which of the uh, records it's on that's uh, that's like combines Cajun and Irish music, which I particularly oh, yeah. it's like Patty past the gumbo or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, I think it's exactly that. Or Patty, St. Patrick was a Cajun. Yeah, 
Paddy Pass, the gun thing in. And they're written by, oh gosh, his name escapes me, but I was actually in Homestead Pick and Parlor looking through the music there and I saw this book of tunes with the most hilarious names on them. And I'm just like, man, if these tunes are good, we've got to do some of these. So they, and they were really good. And he's actually written, oh my God, he's written another Irish tune about me. Like it's named for me and my political um, uh, volunteering. <laughs> something like the Blue Jig of Minnesota or something. Like really cute. <laughs> I so, love that. Um, yeah, but that song is really fun because we have the dancers do the, the normal Irish thing, but they're doing it to the Cajun rhythms and it's, it's really fun. And it looks like Karen uh, chimed in uh, talking, I think, addressing the bluegrass question, uh, um, Tony, the Tim o uh, that you did a Tim O'Brien song with Liz Draper joining on bass. That was really cool. So, um, yeah, a lot of you you just kind of are, are a magnet, Katie, for all the best players uh, around the Twin Cities, uh, which is so Ooh, great. That's lovely. <laughs> um, yeah. And this is such a great town. I mean, Orton's. It's, it's just the talent here and the, the reverence that art of all kinds is held in is, is a reason to love living here and be proud of this. These. Yeah, and that's coming from someone who's a transplant and I, yeah. I, am, I am as well and not from as far away, but I will <laughs> say that um, I think uh, there's a reason why our show, which showcases artists from all over the world, uh, there's a reason why we dig so frequently into our local music community to feature uh these great old albums on the show because as you said there's so much great talent so yeah there really is yeah. and i i'm a little biased i'm i'm from st paul so i uh <laughs> I've, I've known about katie's show for you know for a long long time it's it's legend here in the twin cities and does it ever go on the road katie like in normal times you know when when you're still out there do you take the celtic christmas on the road <sighs> We do and we have done, um, in general, it's like um, we do between two and six shows uh, um, in December time, depending on the week, where the weekends fall. But um, that got a bit curtailed due to small kids. <laughs> That'll happen. Um, but here my, yeah, the year my daughter was born, we were also with the, um, the, the O'Brien, the, the Piano Brothers, and we were their guests on their tour. So... We had 19 shows and she was 10 weeks old. Oh, wow. So that was, wow. <laughs> and we've also been flown to North Carolina. We've gone to South Dakota. So, you know, it, it's harder to go much further afield because then, you know, you're talking airplanes and stuff. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and holiday records, I mean, it's funny, you, you know, they really are just, there's a, there's a window right? Yeah. <laughs> Thanksgiving, you know, to the, you know, the weekend before Christmas, that's all you got, you know, so you yeah, got to squeeze and it all in. some years you only got three weekends and, and mm -hmm. some you've got a bunch and, you know, it works, but yeah, it's hard. And uh, we'd love to know, um, obviously it's, it's hard to have, we don't have a crystal ball about what the world will look like a year from now, but are you hoping to bring back the show next year? Yes, we, we, we discussed it this year and we just decided it was too many uncertainties because it's such an awful lot of work. Um, you know, one person in the in the cast or the dancers get COVID, the whole thing, mm -hmm. you know, could be on uh, cancelled. And um, so we did uh, decide not to do it this year, but we have it in a date of December 16th for next December 2022 put it in your planners <laughs> wonderful yeah, good yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah that's right well we're gonna do that and uh yes. in the meanwhile we're so happy that you've joined us today on the show so that we can get a taste of this uh celtic christmas music and we have another track to listen to right now and this is walking in the air is uh there anything you want to say about this track before we take a listen yeah this was an english um little movie and uh, i think it's about 10 15 minutes long and um it's really pretty it's about a boy at the morning after the snow falls and he's building a snowman and the snowman comes to life and he flies off with the snowman over his town and uh, this beautiful music was written for it and it this was a song that i think was number one in ireland and england when i was about 11 or something and i loved it and i was thought this would be it cool song to record nice well let's give it a listen 
This is Walking in the Air, Katie McMahon on the Back Catalog Listening Party. Floating in the moonlit sky The people far below are sleeping as we fly I'm holding very tight And riding in the midnight blue I'm fine Beautiful stuff. Katie McMahon Gorgeous. walking in the air here on the back catalog listening and folks loving that song. And yeah, it's a beautiful tune. Mm-hmm. And there's so much going on in that recording. In addition to your beautiful vocals on that, there's some great harmony vocals on that. Who is singing on that with you? So um, on that, we, Jenny Russ was my alto in that, and she's, um, I don't know if you're aware of her, she is in this great um, sort of country Patsy Cline type band, and I'm completely blanking the name of it, but she's a great friend as well. Um, if she's on, maybe she remind me. But um, And then the tenor was David Moore, and he's the guy who wrote the choral parts for it. Um, and then the bass, he was Eric. And he's been away for a while, I can't remember his last name. He moved away from the cities. But but what I was listening to that, and what I love about it too, is that we got that rich sound without any synthesizers, mm-hmm. which I hate. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm yeah. really happy about that. We basically, we made uh, Zach just play like three fiddle violin parts. And, um, and it sounds incredibly rich, like there's an orchestral, you know, section right in there. So I really love that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you about that because it does sound like there's several string players, but that's all Zach, huh? <laughs> Zach that's is amazing. is like that's... three string players in one. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he is. He is. Uh, he's great. I mean, he plays his um, octafiddle. I don't know if you're aware of that. Mm-hmm. It's, that it's basically strings that are, you know, tuned down the octave and it's kind of like a, a rougher sounding cello, but um, it's really handy. And we have some tunes that we just use that 
um, if we want to go deep, kind of, you know, atmospheric kind of feel. Yeah, it and sounds I, great. I just want to ask about the, the harp, too. The harp is such a, a beautiful instrument, and it's not something that, I don't know if we've ever even had one on our show here. Um, yeah. It's not as common, um, at least in the, the, the styles that, that we listen to oftentimes on the show. And I'm just curious about your, your history with the instrument, how you got started, and, and, uh, and how that plays a part in, in your music creation. Sure. Um, well, that's my mother's fault, because I wanted to learn the, the violin, and she said she would not be able to handle the, the, the practicing <laughs> um, racket. Here's a here's so, a softer instrument. My grandfather, her, yeah, yeah. My grandfather, her father, um, was a professional percussionist, and he said, you know, she should learn the harp because harp players they hardly play on any of the music, and they get the same money. <laughs> <laughs> so I love it. That's that's how I originally started, but I got a I had a great time with it because I learned from this um, very sort of organic teacher. She didn't teach through. Uh, you know, normal printed music. It was all by ear and stuff, and, and sort of Irish traditional um, kind of methods. Um, so yeah, I've been playing that for years. I teach the harp now, and I did learn it classically as well. So it's it's and it's the national emblem of Ireland. It's on all of our money as well, which is kind of cool. Lots of cool stories about the harp there. You could get hung for playing the harp. Really? So really? They are. <laughs> like if you were really bad or something? Is oh that... yeah. When, when the... <laughs> No, <laughs> that's hysterical. No, um, when the British, when the British were in charge of um, Ireland, they tried to um, just like uh, sort of Native Americans were kept down here and had you know, have to assimilate. So the Irish had to assimilate to the British way, and so we weren't allowed to speak our language anymore. And the harp was such a symbol and such a, a sort of musical strength that um, they banned that as well. Oh. So yeah, it was a bad instrument. Wow. wow. I, d I never knew that. And uh, yeah. I will say, I've always loved the sound of the harp, um, mm -hmm. it, but it is a big instrument uh, to, to tote around with you. Um, so, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I'd be curious when you when you brought this Celtic Christmas show on the road. I don't know if you scaled it down when you toured it, but obviously you have the dancers, you have a whole band, and some of whom play yeah. several instruments. How do you fit the harp in there with all of those people? I have the harp right here. Oh, nice. It's got a teeny, teeny, tiny little oh, that's harp. A, that's reasonably teeny. sized. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's one of them, but I have like three now. Like, <laughs> it's been like, Karen has a house full of auto harps as well, but that's the small one, and I use that for years, and if I'm going on tour, I'll use it, but I have a beautiful uh, bit made in still water by music makers now, and that's significant significantly bigger it's a bit of a hassle but it's amazing deep rich sound mm. so yeah love that <laughs> speaking of karen she chimed in to let you know jenny's band is the saddle soars and she, there and she go. also sings in a abba cover band with katie vernon too so <laughs> that's right so jenny's yeah. a, a woman of many vocal talents uh, so she really is yeah she's She's likewise, and I, and I really believe in that too. I think that singers should be really able to sing in lots of different styles. And now that I teach singing, it's really fun to have people who want to do classical, they want to do traditional folk, but also rock mm -hmm. and, you know, really wailing rock. And that's kind of a really fun thing to, to dabble into and find out how that works, you know how to produce those sounds. Yeah. Speak, speaking of teaching, I was just wondering if, if you could let folks know, like, are you available for, uh, you know, learning the harp, learning to sing, things like that um, online or in person? Um, and if so, how, how would someone um, kind of get a hold of you to, to learn? Absolutely, yeah. I kind of, um, I spent most of the pandemic uh, in Ireland, which was fabulous, um, because I was able to, there was no live music, as you know, and I was able to, uh, teach online the whole time so um that was great and i am i do have a couple of spots left and i'm just thinking i uh, my websites all need to be redone but they can find me at katiemcmahon.com and contact me there or i'm not sure how else i'm just thinking yeah that's probably the best or find me on facebook as well but mm -hmm. yeah all right well wonderful you heard it i put it in the comments uh katiemcmahon.com 
And so. also, uh, we should men- a- ask you, Katie, is this CD that we've been enjoying today, uh, Christmas Angels, do you have physical copies left of this album? Can people buy it anywhere? Um, I do. Um, it's on CD Baby, and I believe you can get it usually in Irish on Grand. Oh, yeah, in St. Paul. Or they, now, that's a St. Paul yeah. store. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, full of Irish people. <laughs> yeah, yep. I'm pretty right. sure I got a yeah. few pendants uh, from that store yeah. back in the day. Yeah, so I know that they, they have it. And uh, yeah, but it, it is, it, it, you know, it's on iTunes and all that stuff. For yeah. People who don't do the physical thing anymore. For sure. And uh, this has been such a treat to chat with you about these songs. Uh, We are going to we'll have one more song for our top tier patrons who are going to be joining us for a special after party today with you, Katie. We're going to we're going to enjoy one more track then. Um, But uh, for the show, we just want to, again, thank you for joining us because this has been such a treat, especially on the snowy uh, Minnesota Friday to to cozy up and listen to some uh, music from all these different uh, musical traditions has been so special. Special. And it really great. feels like it. It's now. It's like now the, Christmas. We've ch- we've, we, yeah, we've moved past it's here. that weekend. Yes, before it really feels that way now. Thanks, thanks to you and your wonderful music, Katie. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. And I uh, want to thank, uh, again, Karen uh, but for her contributions to the project and for joining us today on the show. And then all of you tuned in from, including Katie's parents, tuned in from Ireland and all the folks uh, joining us today. Um, uh, again, you you are why we do this show. Uh, I mean, it started because Tony and I were lonely during the pandemic <laughs> yeah. and we wanted to hang out with our favorite <laughs> artists. But it's really uh, become a, a true community of people who love music and want to discover new music and revisit old records together and uh, so we do this every Friday if you're new to the show every Friday at 4 p.m. Central we invite different guest artists onto the show and next week we have another holiday show we have the McCrary sisters and if you don't know them speaking of vocals oh, yeah. amazing they're like um, uh, they're the go-to um, kind of gospel soul singers from Nashville they're on like every recording you've probably ever heard uh, but they did a great Christmas record a few years back and they're going to be joining us Ooh, that's uh, going to be fun <laughs> it's going to be real good and uh, so that's next week and um, and you can if you like today's episode like it on YouTube direct more bots to Katie McMahon's music and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, to find out what's coming up next uh, here on the back catalog listening party and we want to thank all our patrons that make this show possible every week and uh, these are the folks uh, and especially our top tier patrons who will be joining us for that after party on Zoom today. I want to thank Penny, Ann, Alinda, Bevan, Connie, Vaughn, Alan, Chris, Alex, Becky, Galen, Peggy, Joe, Jim, Beverly, John, Fred, Tim, Sarah, David, Jocelyn, Court, Matt, Steve, Mark, Homestead, Pick and Parlor, uh, and Severin over in Germany. Thank you. Thank and, you so much. And if you want to join our Patreon and give a little money every month uh, to keep the show going, you can do that. You can get invited to special after parties like the one we're going to be having with Katie McMahon. But also we have a holiday party coming up. It's going to be a private holiday party. Where we're just going to uh, share some music, have some drinks together and hang out. Uh, so you can get an invite to that as well uh, if you join the Patreon. But mainly it's all about this, hanging out together. So yeah. thank you for doing it. Thanks so much for being here. And uh, Katie, thank you so much for for spending the hour with us. This is a wonderful way to start the weekend. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And uh, we'll see some of you uh, over on Zoom in just a minute when we get over there. And uh, and we'll have another dram with Katie. (laughs) (laughs) And the rest of you, we'll see you next Friday here on the Back Catalog Listening Party. Cheers. (laughs) Sancha.